Hello everybody, it's Mary and it is Thursday at 1 o'clock Eastern Time, which means it is time for a video tutorial. And we are going to do a fun fold card today. It's an easy one. Um, once you get the measurements down, that was kind of the, the trick of it. So let me just be sure that I'm actually um, transmitting. It looks like I am. <laughs> and we'll see if folks start to join up. All right, so you guys have had a little bit to look at the retiring list. You can't see the new catalog, but you probably noticed that the uh, Magnolia Lane Suite is um, partially carrying over. The stamp set, of course, is carrying over the two-part stamp set. You get these beautiful images. And then, of course, the Magnolia Memory Dies are also carrying over. Hi, Pam. Hi, Kathy. Glad to see you today. Hi, Karen. Um, one thing I do want to say is even though these stamps, the stamp set and the dies are carrying over, the bundle price is not. So if you look in your catalog, um, current, this is the current catalog, the uh, Magnolia bundle, you can get 10% off and purchase this, uh, the whole stamp set and dies together. If you wait until the new catalog comes out, even though you'll still be able to get them, you'll pay full price for everything. Um, okay. Now there's another couple of things that are retiring. The, uh, the embossing folder is carrying over the gorgeous uh, Magnolia embossing folder. I don't know if you can see it here. It is carrying over, but the designer series paper is retiring and it is beautiful and gorgeous and wonderful and it's on sale for $8.05. Um, both the uh, memories and more, the cards and envelopes and the card pack is retiring. And the Magnolia Lane ribbon combo pack, remember the, the pretty combo with the, uh, the linen ribbon in Sahara sand and the... Um, Mossy Meadow Linen Thread. You get both of those, you get two spools, and they are retiring, and that's on sale right now for $5.40. And then the cork embellishments, the, the three designs of the printed cork embellishments, those are on sale for $3.20 right now. So go ahead and get those while you can. Do remember, the stamps are promised to be here until the end of the catalog, but everything else, is not. So as soon as it's gone, it's gone. Okay. Hey, Daryl. Appreciate you joining. Hi, Amy. How are you? All right. I'm going to set this aside and let you see the card that we're making. Um, this is the card and I've used a couple of the DSP designs and I made a bow. So I'm going to show you everything that needs to be shown before I undo the bow because, you know, me and bows, we're not, we're not the best of friends, especially uh, bows on cards, but I was able to persevere and get it made with, uh, this is actually some of that Magnolia Lane combo pack. So let me show you what's on the inside. Just undo this. Hi, Amy. Appreciate you joining. Hi, Patricia. And then this opens up like so. And you have the inside with the pretty stamped Magnolia image, which I also put on the front of the envelope with a little more of the DSP. Okay. Alrighty. So let's go ahead and get started. And I'm not going to tie that back because, you know, you really only need to see me tie a bow once on, on camera. So I'll set that there and let me get the card pieces out. Now, this will all be tomorrow on the blog post. Thank you, ladies. I appreciate it. Um, the measurements will all be there. I can tell you, I'm going to give you a little hint. If you are trying a new fun fold design, you see something online and, and you don't have directions for it, but you think you can make it, Pull out your printer paper. I don't know about y'all, but uh, we, when we make, you know, have you ever hit print and realized that you wanted one page and your printer is going to helpfully give you 10? And then you've got all these pages with like one line of stuff at the top or one little design or something in the bottom and, and they're, they're useless for anything else, but you just can't bring yourself to throw them away. So keep them and use them uh, kind of like fitting patterns in sewing. So that was how I was able to make this work, okay? But I will give you these instructions for this card tomorrow. There's a few card cuts that you're gonna need. 
and we are going to start. You're going to need a piece of 12 by 12 cardstock in whatever color. I've used Mossy Meadow. You could very, very easily use basic black. That would work perfectly here. I'll just be straight up. I did not have a 12 by 12 piece of basic black anywhere to be found in my stash, and so mine is Mossy Meadow, but it turns out to be perfect. Black, Mossy Meadow, and Petal Pink is kind of awesome. All right, so we're gonna pull out the Simply Scored tool and we're gonna make a few scores, okay? So I've got, this is a five and a quarter inch tall, or so far, blah, 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 five and a half inch tall by 11 inches long, okay? So putting the long side across the top, I want you to score at two and five eighths and again at six and six seven eighths. And in theory, that gives us what I wanted. Now, this is a little bit unequal because, let me show you on this fold. When I first did this, I used 11 and an eighth. And when I folded it, this edge right here butted right into my fold and it didn't lake nicely. So I just shaved an eighth of an inch off. Therefore, the measurements are five and a half by 11. See? Easy peasy. Okay, so I've got that done and that is really all I need my score tool for. Let me get rid of this. And we'll go ahead and get our lines burnished with my bone folder that, you know, it went somewhere else besides where I could find it. That was handy. Okay, yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. See, the good news is, is I am always, as always, completely and totally prepared and all of my stuff is right where I can find it. Yeah, yeah, that was a ginormous, oh, there it is, under my cardstock, duh. Okay, so we're just gonna burnish. And then this is the part that's actually going to be the pointy side, so we'll give that a little burnish there. Okay, so. When we are cutting this, the card base itself, we're going to, really, it's quite easy math. We're gonna go from the score line to the halfway point and from the score line to the halfway point. This is five and a half, so it's two and three quarters. So let's pull out the trema. And I'm going to use my ruler and mark two and three quarters down with a pencil, a pencil, but I'm gonna do it like this so that I'm not adding a level of complexity because I just don't need it to be any harder. So two and a half, there's two and three quarters. Use a pencil and then you can erase it if you don't get it marked off, okay? And this is the lazy girl's way to do this. So I can see my mark, even if you can't, I promise I can see it. I'm just gonna put the mark in the cutting trough and on the other end, I'm putting the score. So I've got the mark here and the score there, and I'm just gonna cut that off like so. And then reverse. Thank you, Patricia, appreciate it. Do you still need the 12, uh, 11 inch, eight and a half by 11. No, you know, you could probably do it with an 11 inch piece now. Yeah, eight, yeah, you could, you could. That, oh. See, Patricia, you should be doing this, you should. Okay, so now I'm putting again, what is the two and three quarters inch mark at the bottom and up at the top is the score and I'm gonna come from the top down. Usually when you're cutting, it is easier to, cut, to begin your cut from a longer edge. So by that I mean against that kind of an edge instead of against this kind of an edge. It's not a hard and fast rule, but if you can opt for the bigger uh, space, if you will. Okay, all right, so let's put these aside. Okay, now, this was where it was a little tricky. It won't be for you because I've done did it for you. And I'm gonna change up, I'm gonna use a little bit different uh, DSP pattern. It is still from the Magnolia Lane this is still gonna be the top, and this is gonna be the front. Okay. And what we're doing is for this top mat, you're going to make a mat that is two and a half this way 
by five and a quarter this way. And then you're just gonna do the same. Against one side, you're gonna measure halfway down, okay? And I'm gonna repeat that process with the DSP. The DSP is a little smaller. It is um, two and three eighths wide by four and seven eighths long, okay? And I actually made several templates because it took me a second to get the math right. So I have a mat and then I made a template for my DSP from my discarded printer paper. Okay, so it's handy to have when you need it. Okay, and that's a piece of Whisper White that we're gonna use a little later. All right, so this one, this mat is five and a quarter long, so I'm gonna go two and five eighths. That's two and a half plus the additional eighth. And I'm gonna make a little mark there and just do the same cutting technique as before, okay? So I've got the two and five eighths mark there and the point of the card, the mat there, and I'm just going to cut. <clears throat> and this one, you don't have much choice, right? There's not either of a good end, so I'm gonna pick the better end. To me, this has more space, so it's more likely to get a clean start. You could also, if you wanted, you could bring your trimmer down and start your trim in the middle of the cardstock like that, okay? So that's that piece. And then for my DSP, again, it's two and three eighths by five and one eighth. So two and a half plus a sixteenth is where I'm gonna mark down, okay? So it's a little waggy, but it's okay. So, um, Okay, so two and a half would be five, so it's gonna be two and a half minus a little bit, okay? Does that make sense to you guys? So two is half of four, and then you've got three quarters, so that's three eighths, so we, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven eighths, so six eighths would be three eighths plus a little bit. So two and three eighths plus a little bit, so sixteenth, if you will. Y'all following? You tracking? Anybody not tracking? I'm going to wait for just a second and see if anybody's not tracking. Hi, Heaven Best. Hi, Patricia from El Salvador. I like to cut from the center, then up to the point and down to the other point. Yep. Once you figure out a... Um, hey, Brooke. Once you figure out a technique that works for you, then that is absolutely the best way to go. Okay, so we're going 2 and 3 eighths plus a 16th. And I'm going to mark it. And it's not real easy to see on that patterned paper. Actually, let's do it from this side because you can see it from there. That's much more better. So two and three eighths plus 16, that's a half. Okay. <clears throat> so again, the same technique, put the mark in the cutting channel and the top point there and then cut. like so. Okay, now I'm going to put these aside so that I don't get myself confused, because I can assure you confusion is my middle name. My mother thinks she named me Mary Kathleen, but in fact, it's confusion. Okay. Now I'm just going to make a little erase there, just in case that I can't see it, and I'm going to use liquid glue to adhere this to my mat. <laughs> Amy. Never tracking. I understand. This week, I was sitting fat, dumb, and happy, thinking I was all ready to go, and then I realized I had not gotten quite as far as I thought. So then all of a sudden, it was a big, ah, I've got a video in an hour, ah! <laughs> it's been that kind of week, I'm just saying. Okay, so we're going to put this on here, and this is kind of an eyeball-y thing. You're going to eyeball it you know, kind of try to make it as evenly spaced all around as you can. And then we'll go ahead and put that on our card front. Easy peasy. Like so. I love, I love <clears throat> Petal Pink, Mossy Meadow, and Black. This is a great, great color combo. Okay, and again, we're just kind of trying to make it even on there as best we can. And you use, use liquid glue, people, I'm just telling you, so you've got a little squiggle time. 
All right, so then for the card front, I have another piece, and that's not, I'm not gonna use this Whisper White. Don't do that. I'm gonna use this piece of DSP. I just changed up a little bit to get a little bit different look. Still think it's pretty. I still like it quite a bit. This is the prettiest darn paper. You know, we get so wrapped up in using the um, mini catalog papers that we forget the gorgeous papers in the annual, and then all of a sudden, they're retiring in a month. Less than a, uh, well, a month. These will be gone on the 2nd of June, yeah? Or the 3rd, 2nd or 3rd of June. I can't remember what I wrote this morning. <clears throat> I think it's actually the 3rd. Okay, and then we're gonna put this on the front and then we'll make our decoration. It's very easy. I can tell you this is a really easy fold, it, especially once you already know the, um, the dimensions. It was getting the dimensions that was a little bit hard, but out of the very kindness of my soul, I'm going to just give them to you straight up. Hey, Kathy. <laughs> okay, so we're all having that kind of a week, yeah. It is not just you. June 2nd at midnight. The new stuff goes live on the 3rd. Woohoo! I can't wait, but I will be really sad to see this paper go because of how very, very pretty it is. And I'm going to show you something else so cool in just a second right after I take a drink so that I don't have a coughing fit. Hang on. Okay. So there is my card front. And now let me remind you what our decoration looks like. And I'm gonna take this ribbon off just so it's not distracting us. This is a fun little doodad, a doohickey, a, mm, what shall I say? How shall I call it? A perk of this paper. This beautiful paper, and you can see that I've already cut out a few flowers. The flowers on this paper perfectly fit the die in the Magnolia Memory Die. So all you gotta do is cut it out, you get a nice little black border, and you are ready to rock and roll, kid. I'm just saying, this paper is really, really cool, and the fact that it works with this die set is cooler even, even cooler, okay? Now, I have also cut out one each of these three leaves with uh, out of some mossy meadow, so I've got that all ready to go. And then I have also, my flower. See how pretty that gets when you cut it out? I'll put it against that white background so you can see it, right? Isn't that pretty? All right, and then three of these leaves. And then I um, made a label from the Stitched Shapes labels. Uh, no, Stitched So Sweetly. I used this uh, smaller of the curly, this label. So this label right here. And yes, I cut two because there's always a chance I'm gonna screw this up. So <laughs> I'm prepared. I'm absolutely, totally prepared. I get one fail and then I can, I'll be, then I'm stuck and I have to do what I'm gonna do. Okay, I'm going to embossy, embossing buddy this. And y'all, these are retiring. They're four or $5 or $4. Get you a couple because if you like to heat emboss, these are a game changer, okay? And if you don't like to heat emboss, you should heat emboss because then you're gonna like it, okay? Hey, Teresa, glad you could join. Beauty Miss Flower Cutting, I know, right? I know, Amy, how did you miss that? It's because we've been busy with the other sets. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the Hello stamp from Magnolia, Good Morning Magnolia, and I am going to stamp it a little bit offset on my uh, die cut label in Versamark, okay? So you aren't gonna be able to see this very well, but I'm just holding it there to get a good image. And you can kind of uh, turn it so that the light reflects on the Versamark and make sure that you got a good image. And then I'm going to sprinkle it with white Stampin' Emboss powder. Black so. Okay. And before I blow on that, I'm going to close my lid on my Stampin' Emboss powder. Please don't ask me how I know what happens if you don't do that. <laughs> I'm just throwing it out there. Okay, it's gonna get a little loud. 
Oh, the embossing buddies are already gone. Oh my goodness. Well, I'm glad I got a couple of three. No, I don't hoard toilet paper, but I do hoard embossing buddies. Okay, it's gonna get loud, sorry. Here you go, I'm gonna turn this, I'm just gonna angle this a little bit so you can watch the magic. Can you see the magic happening? Probably not, but the magic is happening. And it's turning and you just hold it steady. You don't have to do all of this and that and the other. Um, on vellum, you might want to do that, but on regular cardstock, you're good to go. And you just wait until it all turns pretty white and shiny, and then you take it away. Now, if you've got one of these tools from Stampin' Up! It has two settings, okay? The high is for heat embossing. The number one level, which is lower, is really good for drying ink. So, like, if you've got some tuxedo black sitting there and you know it's going to smear everywhere because it's like wearing a white t-shirt, if you know that, use the number one setting on your heat tool to help dry it. And that also works really well on, um, oh, man, on vellum. All right. And I guess I'm sorry that I just told you to buy two or three embossing buddies because they're gone. Never occurred to me to even look. Okay. Now, before I do anything else, let me show you how we're going to lay this out. I'm going to put it just like that, and then I'm going to stick some flowers, I mean leaves, under like so. But I'm going to get all those little chads out of there, little hanging chads. I got me some hanging chads here. Don't need me some hanging chads. I'm going to poke it out with my tweezers. And we're gonna put him like so, I think. Okay, so let me pick that up and I'm just going to um, put a little bit of glue on all of those. Just a little bit, you don't need a lot, you're just... And remember, this glue is like the world's best glue. You don't need a lot, you do need the end open. There you go. Just a little bit on the, flat, on the leaves, okay. And then I'll just set this back over the top like that. And pick it up. Make sure everything is adhered. And it'll be ready to go in just a second. Move my, you like my um, ramekin slash parts holder? Yes. <laughs> Hi, Sheila. All right. Now I will tell you, just a reminder, when this embossing uh, powder, after it's embossed, but before it's completely cooled, leave it be for a second until it cools because it, it's a, it'll be a little tacky and you can actually kind of pick it up and smear it. So be a little bit, you know, judicious about that. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and use a little liquid glue and adhere to the flower. And I'm gonna put the liquid glue right on the label, like so. There, just like that. Okay, now we're going to use black Stampin' Dimensionals to pop that onto the envelope. This is, I'm just gonna call it an envelope flap because that's what it looks like, okay? The only trick is you don't want dimensionals down here because uh, there's no need for that, particularly. You want the dimensionals in this space. So after I messed that up on my first one, Really what's the easiest is to just put a couple right there and then put one next to it on the card base. You do want to leave a hole for your ribbon, but I thought it would be fun because there's another ribbon that works really nice with this particular set, even though it's in the occasions catalog. And that is this ribbon. And it occurs to me, hang on just a second, because I looked, I think, at the wrong... Hey, somebody who has access to this, uh, Amy or Karen, I think this actually, this is carrying over this ribbon. I looked for it, but I looked on the annual catalog, and it's an annual, it's a... Mm, this is an occasions catalog thing, so if somebody would look, that would be great. But I like this, and I think it would be really pretty on here because it's petal pink, and this is the organdy striped ribbon that I'm pretty sure is in the Parisian suite. 
So we're going to do that. So what I'm showing you this for is wherever, whichever ribbon you decide to use, you don't want dimensionals where it's going to go, right? So let's just go ahead and put a couple of dimensionals right there on the card base. Like so. We'll put one right there. And we'll put one. Yes, it is carrying over. Yay, because it is so beautiful. It's the most beautifulest of them all. All right, so we're just going to pop it just like that. And I'm going to put another couple right above that just to give it some support. Okay. Love me some black stamp and dimensionals. Got to love them, especially when you're using all of these black things. Now I'm going to move this like that. And then we'll just go ahead and pick up the covers. Pick up the covers. Apparently I have a little glue on my fingers. I got some glue on my fingers. Yes, I do. And then I'm going to put this right there in the metal. Okay. And yes, all you got to do is, she says, hoping it will, all you got to do when I get ready. And you're just going to run it through like that. Okay, but before we do that, let's get the inside done. And we're just going to do a little more stamping. Thinking of the metallic edge ribbon. Oh, yes. Yes. Mm. I don't have mine yet, Sheila. I'm, I'm hoping we get them soon, but I think there's a distinct possibility we won't get them for a minute. Okay, now with Tuxedo Black, I'm going to go ahead and stamp this pretty Magnolia Single Bloom on a piece of Whisper White. And I'm just gonna hold it down for a second and then set it aside. And I'm gonna do the same on the front of my envelope. Like that, and set it aside to get good and dry. And I'll cover that so that I don't make a terrible, terrible error. And then I will pull out my Mossy Meadow and use my Thinking of You stamp. Now, remember what I mentioned. When you pull out a new stamp set, whether it's one that you've used in the past or one that you have just now put the sticker on and are using, I always think it's not a half bad idea to do a little stamp on your grid paper. So what I'm doing here is I am making sure that my image and my sticker are the same. So I'm actually lining up the bottom of that word thinking with one of the lines on my grid paper. And I know that I've got the image straight, the sticker straight. So if my image comes out straight, then I, I feel like I'm pretty good to go. Okay, and it is, and I think I'll be fine. So I'm just going to put it straight down like so, I know, I know, Margine, it's going to be sorry, it's sad to see it go. You see that? You probably can't, but I can because it's going to make me insane. But I'm going to see if my eraser will fix it here in just a second. Mossy Meadow, for me, is the same as Tuxedo Black. Let's see if I can get that off of there. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Y'all, get you one of these sand and rubber erasers. Trust me on this. It has saved many a piece of cardstock for me. Okay, now I think that the tuxedo black is probably dry. I'm just gonna give it a little dab like that, just to be sure. And then I'm going to color it with my light and dark petal pink blends. Oh, I want the brush end. And I'm going to do my usual highly artistic coloring. Just flood with the light. And then I'll come back with some dark. Because, you know, me and Picasso, we are blood relatives. And I'm just putting the dark kind of in the centers of the petals. And then I'm going to come back and pull part way. Yes, this is some master class of coloring, I can assure you. And while I have it out, I'll go ahead and do the um, envelope. Now, I have told you in the past, I know that when you are using blends on an envelope, it is helpful to put a piece of plastic or something like your old Stampin' Majig acetate inside the envelope. 
I am taking a risk. I'm just hanging it out there because I'm a risk taker. If you know me, you know that's not true. But I am just coloring very lightly, okay? So I'm, I'm not pushing down, I'm not scrubbing, I'm just barely touching the envelope, okay? And if you do that, you can usually get away with not doing that. And then there's gonna be the times when uh, you try that and it doesn't work, okay? Now I'm gonna use my Mossy Meadows. Uh, Y'all remember the blends are not retiring. What's retiring are the individuals. So once this catalog goes away, what you'll be able to buy is combos only, not individuals. Okay, so repeating my trend, I'm going to color my leaves with the dark or with the light blend. This is Mossy Meadow, like so. Brooke, did you say these are Japanese magnolias? I'm, I'm very impressed by that. To me, these are just, you know, pretty flowers. And I know they're magnolias because Stampin' Up! put it on the name. All right, and we're just doing a little blending, a little shading. I've left the dark closer to the middle of the flower because that's kind of where I figure it would probably be darker than lighter. And we'll repeat on the inner liner. We're about 31 nano moments away from being done, you guys, so that's pretty good. I got a little jiggy with that. I can probably fix it with my color lifter, maybe. Okay, the trick with the color lifter is you want to give it a minute to get dry. All right, actually you want to give it a bunch of minutes. Oh good, Kathy, I'm glad you've got more paper coming because it's pretty, really pretty. Now you can see I got a little bit overly excited with my uh, <clears throat> blend there. So I'm gonna take the bullet in and I'm just gonna kind of try to push that in a little bit. Now it may not quite get there and it's gonna take it a second to disappear, but I'm gonna bet on it working and go ahead and put the liner in and then we'll do a couple of pearls on the front and we'll be good to go maybe a little more paper on the envelope all right now these are the same size panels as on the front of the card okay the larger piece of dsp on the front of the card <clears throat> okay so we'll open this up now here's another thing. This is a giant area. If you want to make this card as something that you could write a piece, you know, a note or something on, a little longer note, not so much a I love you, see you later, bye, um, you could put another Whisper White matted on petal pink. It's not the same size as this is a little bigger panel. So you want to do your measurements and, but you could easily do that. And you could stamp another flower if you wanted, or you could just leave it blank. But I would definitely mat it on some petal paint just to kind of keep give it a finished look. All right, now I'm gonna close this up. And I'm gonna get me some pearls. Oh, they don't shed giant leaves. Hmm. I'm using some small basic pearls and putting them on this label and I'm going to put two right here like that in a little line and then we're going to see how I do with a bow a bow like a sew and I've told you in the past that I make my ribbon extra long when I'm going to do it for a video because it's, you know, that's just not my thing. But I did discover that when you're making a bow on a card, the rabbit ear method does work pretty good. Just saying. Okay. And then you're just going to make it, get it pretty like this. Okay. That's way too big a bow, so we'll just pull it down and fiddle with it a second till it gets pretty. 
that wasn't that wasn't pretty at all that didn't do good at all there we go so I'm not really sure which one I prefer the one with this ribbon well you know once I got it once I get it fixed it's just not being at all good stop it stop it stop being an inanimate object we'll try it again let me try again this is the last one. If I don't get it, you don't get to see it. Sorry. Because I'm not going to keep you here until the 12th of tomorrow To while I fuss with this bow. I know there are people out there who would have already made the bow three times and it would be perfect, but that isn't me. It's not how I roll. I don't do good with ribbons. <laughs> okay. Uh. I, th I like that one. We'll take it. We'll take that one. Yeah. Okay, so we've got this one, and we've got this one with the um, Magnolia Lane ribbon. And it's really kind of hard to say which one. I like them both. I do. I'm not sure which one. I would have to say I prefer, but I like them both. So which one do you guys like better? See, my big old fat fingers don't like it when I've cut off my ribbon already, but I'm gonna persevere. I'm persevering. Never surrender, never give up. Oh wait. All right, what was that movie reference, people? No, it wasn't Star Wars, Amy. It wasn't Star Trek even. That's all the hint I'm giving you. Who knows it? There we go. All right. And obviously I didn't get, I'm not gonna cut this off because obviously I didn't get it evened up, but there we go. And let's go ahead and put our paper on. I picked some of this stripy paper for my envelope flap. I picked the, uh, on the other one, I used the dark flowery paper, so you can do whatever you want. Heck, you guys, you could just go crazy, go rogue, completely rogue, and not even use one of the paper designs that was on your card. What? You could go off book. I'm just saying, you could go completely off book if you wanted to. There are so many beautiful designs in there. And that's the other piece. So this is a great card to use up. Um, it's pretty easy, just some cuts. And now that you know the cuts, it's easy peasy. And it's a great way to use up some DSP if you need to use it up, just saying. Because all of the DSPs in the pack are complimentary and you really can't go wrong, I think. But that's just my own personal opinion about that all right there we go <sighs> look oh get crazy now what see you could do anything you wanted like that all right i want to show you one more thing please don't miss the um share sunshine pdf download it's only 12 dollars, and look at the fun uh sentiments that you get and you just you can print them out and then you can print them on your cardstock, and they have been spaced to match up with like stitched rectangle dies and punches. And part of the PDF are the first two pages that tell you what the coordinating colors are for the printed out sentiments and what um, dies or punches they were designed to work with. So you can just punch them right out or cut them right out, and you get some fun sentiments. I'd totally share my toilet paper with you. Let's just roll with it. I'm smiling under this face mask and you can see you get two of each one in different colors. I like this one. Sending love and if I could toilet paper. I can't wait to social undistance with you. Stay safe. Flatten the curve. I need to flatten some curves. Sending joy and sunshine, not germs. I'm really all here, just socially distant. So there's a lot of fun sentiments. Have another quarantini. That sounds like a good idea. 
Um, but anyway, $12, you get to download it instantaneously and be ready to rock and roll. And you can pick one of two charities, either the uh, World Health Organization or, um, oh gosh, what is the second one? I, it just went blank, completely blank. Anyway, it's on my website. You can see which one the other one is. And I just picked to put them evenly between the two. United Way. Thank you, Amy. So you can put all of it to one, all of it to the other. You can put five to one and seven to the other. However you want to do, you can make your donations. And then uh, click Submit, and it will download right to your computer. All right, guys. I will see you on third Saturday. <laughs> at 7 p.m. on my Facebook page, and we will make another card. I hope you have a great rest of your week, and um, stay safe, stay healthy, wash your hands, and stay six feet apart. We'll see you. Thanks for spending time with me today. Bye-bye.